Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing another book haul because I have a problem. I'm sure you guys can relate. It's really hard not to buy books. I'm only going to be including the physical copies for this video because... If I included all the ebooks as well, this would be a incredibly long video. We'll try it. Well, you know what? Heck with it. We'll try it. We'll see if I can get through the ebooks. All right, I'm just going to go through the ebooks that I have bought, I think, in the last month, just to keep this a little bit under wraps, <laughs> and I will go through them fairly quickly. All right, first of all, I bought this lovely Kindle Paperwhite. This is my first experience having a, uh, paper white Kindle of any kind, an e-reader of any kind. I did have an iPad at one point that I read a couple of books on several years ago. I am such a physical copies junkie that it has been a little bit of a task to get me to learn how to read on an e-reader. I am enjoying it. I am actually getting somewhere with this process, so bear with me. I will become an e-reader to some degree at some point. That being said, let's go through my e-books that I got this month. The first one I got was Hellborn King by Christopher G. Brenning. I had watched an interview with Brenning and I thought that it was really interesting enough to the point that I wanted to read a little bit of the book and see what it was about. So I picked up Hellborn King. I'm about 17% through it. I have a ton of thoughts, but that is for another video. The next one that I picked up was Marchwood by R.A. Lawrenson. This one I picked up, honestly, because I've been really wanting to read something that was a little bit lighter. I had heard that this book is a great one for people who grew up loving Brian Jakes. So I'm here for that. I'm here for some cozy fantasy critters, and I'm looking forward to it. The next one I picked up was Burn Red Skies by Kirsten Espinosa Rosero, and I know that Rosero was a finalist, I believe, in the Spiffbo 7. Correct me if that is incorrect. Um, Spiffbo stands for the self-published fantasy blog off. Finally able to say that. And she was a finalist for last year's competition, and the blog off is hosted by none other than Mark Lawrence himself. I love cover designs like this because I just think they're super artistic and cool looking. I know nothing about this story, but it sounded really cool, and I'm excited to read it. The next one I picked up was War Priest by Harmon Cooper, and I'll be totally Totally honest with you guys, I bought this because of the cover. It looks really cool. I always love a good Asian inspired fantasy novel, so I picked this one up hoping to get some similar vibes that I was feeling from Rob J. Hayes earlier in the last couple of months because I absolutely loved his books, and that was the sole reason I picked this up. I'll keep you posted. The next one that I grabbed was Seekers The Winds of Change by Troy Knowlton. Now, this one has been going around the self pub and indie uh, booktube channels a little bit recently. I know that Leslie at the Nerdy Narrative recently read this book and I happen to know Troy because we are in the same Discord server and recently he ate one of those one chip challenge chips and read the first sentence of his book after doing so. Kudos to any author who's willing to go to such lengths to get his story some more exposure, and I've heard really good things about this book, so I decided to pick it up. Next up, I grabbed Legacy of the Brightwash by Crystal Matar. This one I know is a grimdark story with a ton of really heavy themes and a ton of heart. Uh, Crystal Matar is another person that I've met through Twitter, and I'm very excited to see what her writing style is like. Another ebook that I picked up recently was A Sorrow Named Joy by Sarah Chorn. I know that she's another author that's fairly beloved in the indie and self-pub circles, especially on Twitter, and I have heard so much about the emotions that she evokes through her writing, so I picked up a copy of one of her books just to get a taste of what her writing style is like, and I'm really looking forward to that. The next one that I picked up was The Written by Ben Galley. I have seen him mentioned on Patrick Leo's channel many times. This is another author where I picked up one of his books just to kind of give myself a taste of what he likes to write and what his stories are about. You'll see this theme reoccurring in my ebooks here, and that is that I'm picking up a lot of authors for the first time on ebook and just wanting to get myself immersed a little bit into their writing style and figure out what they're all about. The next book I'm going to mention here is No Land for Heroes, which is a fantasy western by Cal Black, who is another person I've met through the Indie Accords Discord. Um, Cal is awesome, and I have been hearing some rave reviews about this book. She has a very BA uh, mom protagonist, which I'm very excited to read, and I'm just here for the idea of fantasy westerns. I think that it's awesome that westerns are kind of making a 
little bit of a comeback into the trends. I'm here for it. I'm ready to read one. Next up on ebook, I got The Blood of Crows by Alex C. Pierce. This book I uh, basically read in the synopsis that it is a fantasy heist, and it has been some time since I read a heist story. And knowing that I am a big fan of The Gentleman Bastards and love The Lies of Locke Lamora, so much, I was like, yes, please, I need another heist story. I have not read a heist for a very long time, and I have a lot of high hopes for this book. Next up, I have The Seventh Cadence by Jim Wilborn. Jim is yet another Indie Accords author, and he is a incredibly detailed outliner author, which I have so much respect for, because I can't. So this is a book that is a chonk, like this is a big book, okay? And I'm very excited to read it because the, first of all, look at this cover. Second of all, I'm very excited to see what amazing um, plot work that Jim has done in this book. I've heard a lot of really good things about it. I'm very excited to, again, dive into my first experience reading Jim's work. Another Indie Accords author that I picked up is Children of the Dragon by Melissa Stone. I've also gotten to know Melissa a little bit over the last couple of months, and I'm very excited once again to read her book. I have absolutely no idea what this book is about. I know that there are dragons involved, and honestly, that's enough for me. I'm a big fan of reading books written by friends, and I'm excited to see what Melissa has created in this book. The only non-self-pub and indie fantasy book that I've gotten this month on Kindle is We Are the Dead by Mike Shackle. Again, this is a book that I don't know a lot about, other than the fact that it's very dark, but has a ton of heart. I know the brothers Gwyn talked about it quite a bit on their channel and did an interview with Mike Shackle that I really enjoyed watching. Again, I'm really excited to read this. This is a chonk, so I'm not sure when I'm gonna get to it, but I've heard amazing things about this book. Moving on to these giant stacks behind me. These are in no particular order as far as when I received or purchased them. I bought the first two books in the... At some point, I will actually be able to tell you if <laughs> these books are in the Conqueror or the Emperor series, but I I purchased uh, Birth of an Empire and Lords of the Bow, which are the first two novels detailing the life of Temujin, who becomes Chinggis Khan, and his kind of genesis story of how he became a ruthless uh, war leader and building a unified nation within Mongolia. I've read book one. I'm hoping to do a dedicated review on my channel at some point soon. I can't say enough about this. If you like historical fiction, please read these books because, at least the first one, because it's amazing. I absolutely loved it. Next up, I have Yellow Sky Revolt by Baptiste Ponson Wu, who is a friend of mine that I met on Twitter. Um, and Baptiste wrote a book that details the Three Kingdoms War in ancient China, told from a character who gets glossed over in a lot of the historical accounts. This is an incredible debut book, you guys, and I was lucky enough to get it as soon as it came out. I am so excited to see where this series goes. Next up, I have four very tiny books that I picked up slash was gifted. All four of these detail the author's experience through some kind of trauma or healing or experiences, and I am super excited to read them. First one is Weeds Also Need Water by Miranda Kulig. She um, does an absolutely beautiful book where, I don't know how well you guys can see this, but every entry is handwritten, and she does a lot of little beautiful uh, plant doodles inside the book. It's a really beautiful exploration through a traumatic experience that she had, and I just think that it turned into almost as much of an affirmation to her readers as it was a healing journey for her, which is really beautiful. Next up, I have three books written by my friend K.E. Andrews. The first one is Sonder and Maury, which is a poetry collection, and then I have two books from her called Let the Hurt Girl Speak and Let the Hurt Girl Heal, both of which I am very excited to uh, get into, and these are going to be fantastic uh, interlude reads in between the larger fantasy books that I'm getting into right now. Next up, I have Tales of Lunis Aquaria, written by Tessa Hasterianto. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, Tessa. I apologize if I'm not. Knowing Tessa, this book is going to be very whimsical and very beautiful, and I'm really looking forward to reading it. Next up, I was gifted a copy for review by the author J.C.M. Byrne of Wistful Ascending, which I just 
finished last night um, and finished my Goodreads review, so definitely check that out. This book was sold to me as a superhero space opera, and honestly, this book fulfills that expectation in the best sense of the word. I don't want to stray too far from topic, so I'm not going to go into my full thoughts on this book, but I thoroughly enjoyed this read, and I think that JCM Byrne gave us exactly that type of a story in the best way possible. I was also sent this beautiful hardcover of Michael R. Miller's book Ascendant, which is the Songs of Chaos book one. It is a beautiful hardcover copy of this book. He sent it to me in exchange for a fair and honest review, which I am looking forward to getting to. I have heard about this book. I have seen it around book two before, and I know that it involves kind of a, a refresh of the dragon writer genre, which I'm honestly here for because I think that there's a lot of really awesome things that you can do with that. Next up, I picked up Priest of Lies, which is book two in the War for the Rose Throne series. I had read Priest of Bones uh, last month and enjoyed it enough that I was curious to see where it was going to go in book two. This book is definitely like uh, war-torn heroes come back and try to reestablish their position as gang bosses in the city that they originally lived in. Next up, I had seen The Last Smile in Sunder City on Leslie the Nerdy Narratives channel once again and I don't know it just sounded like a really fun book. This book is written by Luke Arnold who plays Long John Silver in the TV series Black Sails which I have not seen. I have heard enough about him and it to know that this book should be an absolute gem of a time to read and I'm very excited to get into it. Next up, I have another book by K.E. Andrews, but this time it is her beautiful hardcover copy of The Assassins of Grins and Secrets. Again, this is a story that I don't know a ton about other than the fact that I believe it is Middle Eastern inspired uh, environment and also that the main female character is an awesome assassin and we're always here for that. The other thing that I want to point out about this book, first of all, is not only the cover, which is absolutely stunning. This is such a great example of how beautiful self-published books can be. Look at this uh, interior design. I got it and opened it and was just blown away by how stunning it is. Look at this map. Like, I can't with how beautiful this book is. Next up, I have The Rise of the Ranger by Philip C. Quaintrell, who is another author that I have heard big buzz about in the Indian self-pub um, world. I know that I think his final book in the series just was released, um, and I've heard some rave reviews about it. I was not expecting it to be this much of a chunk, to be perfectly honest, um, but the covers of this series are absolutely stunning, and I have heard enough good things about Quaintrell's writing style that I'm really looking forward to giving this series a shot. Next up, I have a copy of Deathless Beast by Andrew D. Meredith. Andrew D. Meredith is one of my closest author friends. This is a series that I have been very excited to get started on. This is book one of the Collation Saga, and knowing Andrew, I am absolutely anticipating this book to have a ton of really powerful themes with a great amount of heart, and I am just absolutely stoked to start this series. Next up, I took a little detour into some research materials. I bought a copy of Achilles in Vietnam, Combat Trauma and the Undoing of Character. Vietnam is an era of American history that I'm very passionate about learning more about due to having some family members who fought in that specific war. And this book, I think, is going to be a great resource for me as I'm writing my own book that involves military fantasy and PTSD and all of those kinds of heavier themes. Next up is another book that I was not anticipating to be as much of a chunk as it is, and that is The Young Lions by Erwin Shaw, and this is a book that details the stories of ordinary soldiers fighting through World War II. Um, it's kind of a men in the trenches viewpoint, which is something that I always really appreciate. I think that their voices often get overlooked in historical records, and it's something that I'm very passionate about reading more of. Next up, I picked up a copy of Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. This book honestly was another cover buy for me. However, the synopsis did really catch my attention when I was looking at it on Goodreads. If I remember correctly, there's something about the princess's brothers being cursed and turned into the Six Crimson Cranes, um, which... Yeah, like I'm here for it. I'm very excited to see what this book is about. I am definitely looking forward to reading this book. I think it's going to be a touch lighter than a lot of the heavy fantasy that I'm reading right now, which is one of the reasons I picked it up. And honestly, that's just a stunning cover and I'm here for it. 
this one. <laughs> so I went to Goodwill recently and I picked up two like throwaway copies of Harry Potter books one and two. Why did I do this? Well, it's because at the age of 31, I have never actually read these books in my entire life. I've seen all the movies, I know all the lore, like I know all the things, but I've never actually read the original series and I wanted to uh, remedy that and just buzz through them super quick. I will probably not start this series until January of 2023, but you never know. Next up, I received a copy of The Legend of Blackjack by A.R. Witham. If you are in the Indian self-pub community at all and you haven't heard of this book yet, honestly, I'd be surprised. I have heard it said that this book could easily become a coming-of-age portal fantasy classic, and I am very excited to see what all the buzz is about for this book. I have heard nothing but rave reviews for it, and a lot of people have told me that they think that this book is going to be right in my wheelhouse. Next up is another historical fiction, The Wolf of Wessex, and this is by Matthew Harfey. This book takes place in like 900 AD uh, British Isles. Our protagonist is a man who stumbles across a mutilated corpse and then is apparently convicted of the murder of this person, and I'm already here for it because I'm uh, anticipating that this is going to be like ancient British Isles historical fiction murder mystery, which absolutely ticks boxes for me and I'm very excited um, to get my first taste of Matthew Harfey's writing. Next up, I bought a copy of Beasts of a Little Land by Juhee Kim. This book is set in the early 1900s and it, uh, it takes place right in the middle of the Korean uh, push for independence. And I know that there is a character in here who is a young courtesan girl. I know that there's a peasant who saves a officer from a attacking tiger. I think this book is going to be another one that brings some Asian history into very rich and beautiful life. All right, last but not least, guys, have I got a treat for you. I'm going to show you my two favorite books that I've gotten in this last month and a half time period. These are both collector editions and both of these I'm just psyched beyond belief to own. The first one is a copy of James Clavell's Shogun. Um, this is book one in his Asian Saga series. This is a chunk, but look, look at it. It's so beautiful. It's embossed and embellished and has this absolutely stunning leather-bound um, hardcover. It's gorgeous! I'm really excited to read Shogun. I have it on my must-have TBR for 2023. Last but not least, I had put kind of a uh, looking-to-buy post on some of the discords that I'm in that I was searching beyond hope for a copy of the Barnes & Noble Howler's edition of Red Rising, which is one of my favorite trilogies of all time. I had the regular hardcover copy, but I had super major regrets about not picking up the Howler edition when it was available in Barnes & Noble. I had the chance to buy it, but at the time I'd only read the first book of the, of the trilogy and I had no idea how much I was going to end up loving it. A very kind soul from one of the discords reached out to me and offered to trade me his Howler edition for my regular uh, Red Rising hardcover, which just about had me falling out of my chair. I have been wanting to own this for years years and the only time I could find it was when it was incredibly overpriced on eBay or Mercari and the fact look I own it now I'm so excited you guys I can't even tell you I know that this is not like the most insane special edition of special editions ever but the fact that I own the Howler copy of Red Rising just makes my heart so happy I can't even handle it look at it it has a special forward by Pierce Brown it has some stunning illustrations um, in the book and I am just so 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 grateful um, so grateful to Mike who is the wonderful kind soul who was willing to trade me for this copy. You have no idea how much I appreciate it. Thank you so much for being willing to trade with me because now I actually own my favorite copy of one of my favorite books. All right, guys, we got through the stack. That was a little crazy. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm very curious to know what books you've picked up in the last month that you're super excited about. Pop them down in the comments below because I want to hear about it. And I hope you guys are having a fabulous week. I hope that you are having five-star reads, and I will see you in the next video.